these bowlers have figured them out. They know what to do. They know when it's going to transition, what balls to go to. I look for high scores. 13 of the 16 players in Scorpion Championship match play were making their first match play appearances of the World Series. Only Jason Belmonte, Bill O'Neill, and Kyle Troop had made it this far on a previous animal pattern. In the first round, at least one of those three would be eliminated as Belmonte and O'Neill drew each other. I really believe in a philosophy of I don't care who I'm bowling, they are uh, a shadow to me. My best friend who I'm bowling in the next match, Bill O'Neill, it just doesn't matter. Um, my job isn't to worry about them, my job is to hit my target and knock the 10 pins over. The first game was Belmonte's as O'Neill didn't strike until the fifth frame. In game two, O'Neill struck through the fifth frame to build a big lead and even the match. Belmonte rolled eight strikes in the third game, then another eight in the fourth, knocking out O'Neill. It's not good beating your mates, but I'd rather beat him than lose to him. I think if Billy bowls anyone else in the building, I think he wins. I think um, he bowled phenomenally, and uh, using that urethane ball made it so difficult for him. Seeking a match with Belmonte in the next round were Zeke Bate and Ray Lussier, who gave fans three consecutive tenth frames that mattered. Game one, Lucier had a chance to shut out Bate, but spared in the ninth, giving Bate a chance to shut out Lucier. Forces Zeke Bate to get the first strike in the tenth, and then a eight count spare. Ball went long, it came back, but the ten pin does not fall. Game two, Bate had the chance in the ninth. Good shot. Look out. Big mistake. Now Bate, if he strikes out, she's 224. Still in the match, I mean, it would force Lucier to get up and get the first strike in the 10th and then, and then spare to shoot to 25. Well, nice finish. Needs a strike. Gets the strike. Now just a spare and he'll be the winner. He will not miss this one. But it'll be close. <laughs> he wins the game. Lucier could win game three with two strikes and count in the 10th. That ball picked up late. Great shot. Oh, oh wait, wait, great uh, shot. Nope. He did his job. He went up there and made a quality shot. Zeke wants to keep going. He needs two strikes in this 10th frame. There's one of them. Perfect. More bowling. More bowling. Absolutely. Two great shots from Bate. Great shots. Game four was all Lucier, striking in seven of the first eight frames and advancing. Top seed Arturo Quintero took game one when Kyle Troop couldn't double in the tenth. Troop stayed clean in game two to tie the match, and Quintero regained the advantage with six in a row in game three. Nine strikes in game four gave Troop a big win with 267, sending the match to five games. Troop struck in five of the first six frames, but opened in the fourth, which was enough for Quintero, who started with the front four and stayed clean the rest of the way. And a beautiful reaction. That's a big win for Arturo. Quintero earned a match with E.J. Tackett. <music> Stu Williams kept it close in game one, but Tackett earned the win and ran away with the next two, ending the match with a three-game sweep. Former Scorpion champion Dom Barrett faced fifth-seeded Kyle Sherman, who was looking for his first TV appearance. Barrett rolled the back six for 246 in game one, giving Sherman an opportunity to win in the tenth. There's the first one. One more nine. He likes it. That was right. That was lucky. He knows it. That was right off his hand, out the window, came back, just leaves the two pin. The second and third games both went to Barrett, and Sherman needed the back four in game four to force Barrett to strike out. Needs them all. High plus shot for Sherman. That did not look that clean off his hand, but and then it finishes high and leaves a nine pin. Will that get back? Just barely. Tom Barrett makes the spare, just needs one pin. That's better than one. Barrett got the winner of the Sean Maldonado-B.J. Moore match. Maldonado spared in the first and got nine on his fill ball, but otherwise struck on every shot, posting 289 and taking game one. Moore fought back in game two, but Maldonado was the first to finish, throwing the back four and shutting out Moore in a high-scoring contest. 
In Game 3, Moore continued striking, but Maldonado stopped. A big win for Moore extended the match. I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder this week. Um, you know, I had a lot of success in here last year, so it was, it was nice to walk back in here. Maldonado returned to striking in Game 5, 11 times. A spare in the first and the back 11 sent Moore home. Matt McNeil took Game 1 comfortably from reigning PBA 50 Player of the Year Brian LeClaire, and the players each won a close one in Games 2 and 3. McNeil put up two more comfortable wins in the final two games to advance to the next round. Devin Bidwell, searching for his first TV Finals appearance, faced Brandon Novak, who made his first TV appearance in this event last year. The players traded wins in the first two games with relatively low scores, then traded wins again in the next two games with higher scores. It's fair strike. There could be a tie. But Novak doesn't want any part of that. And for Devin Bidwell, it's simple. Just make a quality shot. It'll make your life a lot easier. That's got a slide. And it does. He will force this into a game five. In game five, both players started with the front four, with Novak extending his streak to five. Bidwell's two consecutive spares in the fifth and sixth put him in a deficit as Novak didn't stop striking. Anything less than a strike and Novak will lose his lead. Strike will shut it out. He was left off his hand. This is a must shot for young Devin Bidwell. Yeah, Novak will will advance, and you can see the emotion there. I've always been pretty good on, you know, longer stuff. Thought I really love the Scorpion. We've got EJ Tackett, we've got Jason Belmonte, Dominic Barrett, not bowling one another with a chance to make it to the, to the televised finals. Ray Lucier stayed close to Jason Belmonte for the first four frames of game one but three open frames the rest of the way compared to zero for Belmonte put Lucier down early. There were a couple of strategic ideas of using urethane. I knew that the ball was going to carry a little oil down the lane or make it a little tighter down the lane for my opponent. In game two, Lucier kept his scorecard clean, but Belmonte refused to give Lucier any hope. Ten strikes for Belmonte made him the only player to qualify for two animal pattern television finals at the World Series. It's all about momentum in any sport really, and bowling's no different, so um, it was really nice to put together a couple of really good games. Um, you know, Ray, that second game in particular, we're talking a matter of a couple of inches down the lane of the differences between him shooting 270 and 230. So, you know, I told him he executed really well and sometimes the pins will fall for you and sometimes they don't. Dom Barrett needed a strike in the 10th frame to take game one from Sean Maldonado. Needed a strike to, to have any chance to win the game. Game two wasn't as close, with Maldonado winning the match in a two-game sweep. If I make a final, I always like my chances. Uh, I'm confident enough to where I know I can make shots if I need to, and all these guys, are, you know, when it comes down to it, they can make that shot, and it, just, it all boils down to that last moment. It's who's gonna who's gonna make that shot? Brandon Novak posted 199 in game one, creating an opportunity for Matt McNeil to earn the win. For any chance, this ball has to strike. And he gets the first one. Strike here, he's the winner. Anything less, not gonna be. Great shot from McNeil. Novak made sure the 10th frame didn't matter in game two, rolling the front nine and posting 279 to tie the match. Novak didn't strike until the fifth frame in game three, but by then, McNeil had already opened three times. Novak advanced to the Scorpion Championship TV Finals for the second consecutive year. My voodoo ball roll seems to match up on the, you know, on the heavier, heavier patterns. Arturo Quintero from Mexico has never won a PBA title. Big moment for him to have a chance to get there. EJ Tackett took a relatively easy win game one, and Quintero returned the favor in game two. As Quintero struggled in the deciding game, Tackett made sure to fill his frames and earn his first TV berth of the World Series. There's your winner, EJ Tackett. It's a great feeling. It was it definitely hard fought. You know, I, I fought a lot of a lot of things this week, um, physically, mentally, on the lanes, um, and especially in that last match there. That the lanes got pretty ugly with Arturo, and um, I was able to just make my spares, and I was able to come out victorious. <laughs>
Watch the Scorpion Championship final Sunday on ESPN. Subscribe to the PBA YouTube channel and visit next week as we determine the top five players in the PBA World Championship.